Hello, I'm Aaron Mandel. I'm the Director of Education Services for the American Wine Society. We're here at Porter's in Collinsville today. Every year, the American Wine Society puts on a national tasting project. And as part of that, we ask our members to fill out the evaluation form for the wines. This video is going to give a little information about how to fill out that evaluation form. If you look at the evaluation form, you'll see that there are five categories. There's appearance, aroma, taste, aftertaste, and overall impression. And we're going to go through each of these one by one in order to talk about how to fill these out. The first thing we do is we look at the appearance. And with appearance, really as people, we're very uh, over-reliant on that when we're looking at wines. We're used to looking at apples and seeing whether they're ripe. We're looking to see whether they're bruised. But you really cannot tell as much with appearance on a wine. Uh, so we really shouldn't spend so much time worrying about that. Most wines are going to get three points. You don't worry so much about whether it's the right shade of yellow or the right shade of red. What you're really looking for is clues as to whether there's something wrong with the wine. For example, most wines shouldn't have any browning to them. If you see a wine that has brown in it, it's usually an indication of some oxidation, and that's something where it's going to tell you there's a problem with the wine. You may also have some haze in the wine, and again, that may indicate that there's a problem with the wine. So those are the things you're concerned about mostly when you're looking at appearance. The most important thing really with wine is the aromatics. And what we do when we're going to judge the aromatics is first we swirl it, and that's going to increase the surface area in order to help the aromatics come out a little bit. And it's also going to give a little oxygen to the wine. And then you're going to take a sniff of the wine. Now, some people take very tiny sniffs. This is not something your dog left for you in the backyard. This is wine, so you can enjoy it. So get a nice little swirl, take a nice sniff, Now, what are you smelling? On the back of your wine evaluation form, there is a wine aroma wheel. If you're not used to filling out, figuring out what the aromas are in a wine, the wine aroma wheel can help you with that. Most whites are going to have aromas such as citrus fruits, apples, pears, peaches, maybe some tropical aromas like mango or pineapple. Some will have uh, stony aromas, what might be referred to as mineral. Some will have floral. And if you look at the wine aroma wheel, some of these are listed on there. Red wines will have more dark fruits, plum, raspberry, strawberry, blackberry. Uh, they may have some darker flowers, roses, violets. And then either whites or reds, if they've had oak treatment, will have some aromatics from that. You might have some vanilla. You might have some cinnamon or clove. But if you look at the wine aroma wheel and you think, do I smell that in that wine? That can help you get used to picking out the aromatics in the wine. Now, some wines will have very neutral aromas. It's going to be hard to figure out what those aromas are. That's called a low-intensity wine. You're going to have difficulty figuring out what the aromas are. Some, there's no question. You get something like a Concord, they're very aromatic right away. There's a lot of aromas. Uh, maybe a Gewürztraminer, again, a lot of aromas right away. These are more high-intensity wines. And those are things you take into consideration when you're scoring the aromatics. Is it something where you have to dig out the aromas to figure out what they are, or are the aromatics very clear? Another thing you look at is the complexity. Does it only smell like lemon? You're getting nothing else but a very faint lemon aromatic. Whereas others may have four or five things that immediately jump out at you. Aromatic complexity is another thing you look at when you're figuring out what the aromatics are worth in scoring a wine. So here I have a Burgon's Albarino. The aromatics are pretty uh, intense. There are about three things I pick out very easily. There's some floral aromatics of honeysuckle. 
there's some apple, there is some citrus fruit, but it's not very complex. You know, so this is something where I might give it four and a half points because it's got some intensity, not very complex, but it has some. The next thing we look at is the taste. The taste, you take a small amount in your mouth, you swirl it around, and then you either spit or you swallow. When you take a wine into your mouth for the taste, it warms the wine up a little bit. This may bring out more flavors than you get on the nose. So the flavors may be the same as what you smelled. There may be more. Also, you're still oxygenating the wine more, so you may get more flavors on the wine than you had on the aromas. And again, we're going to look at the intensities, how easy it is to pick out the flavors, and you're going to look at the complexity, how many different flavors you're able to pick out. And then you look at basically the structure of the wine. And what we're going to look at for that is the acids, the tannins, the sugars, and the alcohol. Now this is a white wine here, so we don't really talk too much about the tannins. But let's first talk about the acids. Wines are a very acidic beverage. They always have a low pH, uh, much lower than your mouth normally is. So when you drink a wine, it's going to make your mouth water. And sometimes after you taste the wine and spit, or swallow, you can tilt your mouth just slightly forward and you can actually feel the watering in your mouth move forward in your mouth. High acid wines will cause more mouth watering than low acid wines. Some wines such as Sauvignon Blanc and Riesling are naturally high in acids. They're going to make your mouth water more and you expect them to have more of an acid taste than you would with something like a Merlot or a Marsan which is a lower acid white. With alcohol might give you a little bit of sweetness to the wine, but mostly what you're going to notice on tasting the wine with alcohol is the heat. If a wine is out of balance with alcohol, you're going to really notice the heat. I've had 12.5% wines, which is not a high alcohol level, but where it tasted primarily of alcohol because there really was nothing else to balance it out. But if you have a 14.5% wine, a 14% wine, it takes more to balance that level of alcohol out. So if you get heat, with the wine, that's something to take into consideration. With respect to the sugars, most wines um, are going to be relatively dry or they're going to be balanced out. Uh, if you have a cloying aspect to the wine, that tells you that you have a lot of sweetness. Um, most wines are going to have an acid level high enough that it's going to balance out the sweetness so it doesn't taste cloying. And then, of course, there are tannins. Tannins aren't something you generally taste. It's more of a textural feeling in the mouth. It can be very astringent. It can be very drying. Uh, if you have green tannins, it can be very dry. It can affect the top of the mouth as well as the lower part of the mouth. It's very drying. Uh, but sometimes you have tannins that are very ripe and are round, and it really just adds a little bit of heaviness into the mouth. Uh, now, what do you do with all these different aspects? Well, what you're looking for is balance and harmony in the wine. If the acid and sugars and tannins and alcohol is all balanced, none of those elements are really going to stand out by themselves as a predominant aspect of the wine. You shouldn't taste hot alcohol. The acid should not be so much that you feel like your teeth are melting. Uh, the tannin shouldn't be so bad that you feel like somebody's sandpapering your tongue. Uh, if a wine is in good balance, you're not noticing any of the aspects so much more than the other. Sauvignon Blanc, you'll notice certainly that it's acidic, but it shouldn't be so much that you feel like all you're tasting is the acid. So when you're scoring your taste, you're going to look at the different flavors, you're going to look at the complexity, you're going to look at the intensity, and you're also going to look at the balance of the wine. Is the wine balanced? Are all these elements in harmony? Uh, something like this Burgonds, you know, it's a well-balanced wine. Albarino is an acidic grape, uh, so there is some acid in there. Uh, doesn't have a great deal of complexity. Doesn't have a, it does have some intensity. But again, this is probably about a four and a half uh, scoring on this wine. And then we go to aftertaste. 
I, I remember judging a wine uh, that was really had a beautiful, beautiful flavor to it. But before I even put the wine down, the finish was gone. You couldn't taste it anymore. Wines, good wines, great wines shouldn't have that. If you're talking about a finish that's only about 10, 15 seconds, that's a short finish. A wine that has a finish of about 30 seconds, 35, 40 seconds, medium finish. More than that, you're really talking about a long finish. A great wine should have a long, luxurious finish. And, and what do I mean by a finish? This is the pleasant flavors that you're getting from the wine. If you put the wine down and you're tasting nothing but bitterness or acid, that is not the aftertaste. What that is, is something that you make a note that it has a medium finish with a acidic, af, you know, acidic uh, elements or a short finish with bitter elements. What you're really looking for is the pleasant flavors after you taste the wine and how long those last. Now, how do you score those? A really nice finish, really pleasant with lots of flavors, might get a two and a half to three points. A uh, medium finish, that's very pleasant, two points, maybe two and a half. And then short might be a, a min, a one and a half to two. But those all suppose that you're having a really pleasant aromatic or a, a aftertaste experience. If you're not getting a great pleasant aftertaste experience, you're obviously going to mark it down a little bit more. So for aftertaste, you're really talking about how long is it and how pleasant is it. And those have to be taken into consideration in scoring. Finally, you have overall impression. And this is the one that drives the people the craziest because they don't really know what to say for overall impression. It's, do you like it? Do you like the wine? It's only two points. Um, so don't stress about it. What you can do and what I normally do is I say, okay, let's look at all the elements of this wine. Let's look at the positives, let's look at the negatives. Uh, the Burgons it has some good intensity, moderate complexity, uh, has a medium finish, it's pleasant. These are all good elements with some negative characteristics, the moderate complexity. And what you end up saying is, okay, out of the two points, I'm going to give it a point and a half. Most of your wines are going to be that point and a half for overall impression. And that's because with one, you're really saying, this is pretty mediocre. There's, it's lacking a lot of stuff. But two is saying, this is an amazing wine. This is outstanding. This is great. We know that most wines are going to fall between those two areas. Most of them aren't going to be really mediocre. Most of them aren't going to be great. So you say a point and a half. And yes, all of these can have half points. Nothing smaller than a half point, and nothing like you know a point eight. You know, it's stick with point fives or ones. Other than that, you know, this is something that you should really enjoy. There are no right and wrong answers. You're not wine judges. You're just judging these wines for the day. Relax, enjoy yourself. You know, do this with some wines at home. Get used to scoring these wines and get used to the score sheet. You'll find that it's a lot of fun and it helps you present a record as to what you like, what you don't like, and just have a good time with it. Thank you very much. Until next time, I'm Aaron Mandel, and have a good day.